major announcement Michigan football report. Drum roll, please. We're back, baby, and better than ever. I mean, we've just been basking in the glow, Jack. We uh, we went to Mexico. We uh, we traveled over the world, and uh, we're just excited. I mean, we've been doing a lot of things, but uh, we're back and better than ever. Spring practice got started this week. You excited, Jack? Tell us what you've been up to. I don't think we've ever been more back. We were back last year, but now we're back, and we're national champions. So back. I don't think we've ever been more back. It's more back. Back and national champions. And now the focus turns to Atlanta or bust. There's Houston or bust. We, we made it happen, right? Frankly, we made it happen. Now it's Atlanta or bust. 12-team playoff. Mission going to go back-to-back, win the national championship. You see I'm crazy? You may want to watch today's show. And end of today's show, thank you so much to all the people who contributed a $10 Super Chat or more. And there was quite a few of that, many, many of those. Uh, giving shout-out and thanks to our producers, super producers, uh, the contributors to the Michigan Football Report. New end screen launches today, so stick around to the end of the show. If you don't have time to watch the whole show, just fast forward to the end. Give some shout outs and uh, show love to those people who help make this show possible. It's the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. Let's go. Take a look at quite a few things here in the show, taking some questions, looking at spring practice. Want to start with this one because it happened over the weekend. Uh, what should happen to Greg Scruggs, right? Uh, Wisconsin defensive line coach came over to be the first defensive line coach uh, for Sharon Moore, replacing um, Greg Elster, uh, Mike Elston, who, of course, is now with the San Diego Chargers. Uh, I've got a lot of thoughts on this, and I put some on Twitter, so I hope you guys are following me, at James Yoder. Uh, before I give you my answer to this question from Caden, I do want to remind you guys, uh, this show is uh, you know, powered by you, the subscribers. So hit that subscribe button here on YouTube if you have yet to, because we are the national champions of Michigan football YouTube. We won the ratings battle in 2023, took out WTKA, all the Detroit radio stations, TV stations, number one podcast, the YouTube channel by audience. We want to continue it again in 2024. Uh, this is the national champions of football and of YouTube Michigan football. So, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. My take is this, folks. Three strikes and you are out. Look, I have family members, friends, etc., who have had problems with, you know, certain things in their life. And you know, people got to take responsibility for their own actions. And um, sometimes they go. We have Greg, a decade plus, like Greg Scruggs did, with getting in trouble, getting in trouble again, uh, maybe, you know, kind of getting the easy way out of things. And uh, by not you know doing any jail time, having multiple alcohol-related driving offenses. 2011, when he's still in college, uh, kind of got kicked off the team for their bowl game. Then 2013, he's in Seattle, another DUI. Now he gets a lawyer, he's an NFL player with some bucks, pleads down to just reckless driving, goes and you know, plays for a few years in the NFL, coaching, coaching, NFL coach, Wisconsin defensive line coach. Now he got the big boy job, Michigan defensive line coach. People are saying, like, hey, he's on the fast track to being somebody's defensive coordinator, to being a head coach in four, five, six years from now. Third time he's had an alcohol-related um, offense, less than a month after he was hired at Michigan, and less than two weeks after he was officially announced as a hire for Michigan, right? They did these background checks. That's what took so long because of the issues with, you know, Connor Stallions and Alex Ude and uh, obviously – uh, Shemmy Shembeck, Lyric said to Michigan, taking extra precautions. Um, life is about choices, folks. Life is about choices. Life is about consequences of those choices. I don't understand it, Jack. Um, if I was getting paid by a an entity like Michigan, right? Unfortunately for me, I happen to you know be responsible for the pay. I can't like you know just say, oh wow, well somebody else is paying my salary, etc. If Michigan was paying me seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, you're damn right I would have a driver take me out. In an Escalade, I'm booking you for four hours, five hours, $100 an hour. Cool. 500 bucks for a night? I'm going to Escalade Sweet. Take me to this bar with my buddies, whatever, coaches, whatever it is. I'm going to dinner, having two glasses of wine with a girl, whatever it is. Let's ride in style because it's so cheap. It's a drop in the bucket. If you're making $750,000 a year, I mean, what are we talking about here, Jack? That's thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a week. A week. Are you kidding me? I mean, you're spending a little drop in the bucket, like you said, to not potentially lose your job. I potentially lose your job. It's basically insurance against not being humiliated all across the internet on, I think it was Saturday, and losing your job. And maybe, you know, it take, might take him a year, two, three years to really get back into coaching because of the stain that's going to be on his, um, you know, on his his name. Anytime anybody Googles Greg Scruggs, anytime he's talking about, it, oh, is that the guy who have three alcohol-related arrests? If the first thing he's going to do, right, 
is two weeks after his announced, a month after really kind of accepting the job at Michigan, is get this alcohol rate of the fans blowing a .117, which is probably like four or five drinks um, in the last uh, the hour or two prior to uh, getting pulled over by the police. I think that uh, he's already making bad decisions, and it's going to come back to bite Michigan in the future more likely than not. You don't even want to deal with that if you're sure more. There's plenty of great football coaches out there. So uh, Greg Scruggs suspended indefinitely after his arrest last week. And uh, I think before too long that Michigan's just going to announce that they've parted ways with him and he's going to move on. They hope he gets the best help, et cetera. One more thing to add that uh, with Scruggs. And this is maybe just me be doing math. And I'm not making any accusations against the guy, but if you're going to get pulled over and arrested for driving drunk, driving under the influence, whatever you want to call it, alcohol in your system, well over the limit, you're driving a car three times in a 13-year period, you better believe that I, as a just simple purveyor of mathematics, would say, you've driven drunk hundreds of times. You just got caught three times. So I don't really have any uh, uh, any you know um, sympathy for Greg Scruggs. Shouldn't have been done it. And I think he's going to suffer the consequences. Michigan should and will fire him, I think, probably in a matter of days. All right, guys. Come on. We're going to take a look inside Sean Moore's first spring practice. Things got going on Monday. We've got a spring break coming up. I think it's in one month from today, right? April 20th, 420. Jack, you know what's up with that 420? Sean Moore honoring, uh, you know, those uh, Puff the Magic Dragon odds. We'll talk about that here in, uh, in a moment and what to expect the rest of the next month. My man, Murs, Stephen Murs. Uh, you should follow him on Instagram. Uh, he's got a back from a hell of a trip to like Thailand. It was looked cra crazy and wild. Um, will the new NIL advancements that Michigan's been talking about and rumored, signing deals with Learfield, signing deals with his other agency, will they become a game changer? It's all more smoke and mirrors. Um, I'm a, for me right now, I am a show me, don't tell me when it comes to, um, it comes to name, image, likeness. So I haven't seen anything specifically that shows me that Michigan's really changed the game, right? Ohio State clearly has changed the game, right? They put big money this offseason. They got so sick of losing to Michigan, getting their butt kicked by Michigan, getting their asses stomped in by Michigan this entire decade. Michigan won the national title, that they just pooled all their money into buying players, completely cheating, offering starters at Alabama and Kansas State and Alabama and Ole Miss and probably Alabama again, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to transfer, totally legal, totally... Um, uh, frankly, shameful and frankly, embarrassing. It's like your wife uh, and you get divorced. She's married to a better guy. So you're just going to start driving like a, uh, a Corvette convertible and, uh, you know, dressing like a 20 year old to, uh, to try and show her who's boss. That's what Ohio State's going on. But it's still wait and see for Michigan. But hey, we saw, right? NIL era. Michigan's got the best record in college football, 40 and three. Uh, three straight Big Ten championships. Only team that can do that in a power conference and is the defending national champion. So from what I can tell, NIL uh, and, you know, struggles have not uh, hurt this Michigan football program. Let's keep it rolling here. Got a uh, deal for you guys. We've taken about a month and a half, two month off from consistent programming. I've just been celebrating, Jack. We've been celebrating. You know, I don't, I don't want to think about Jim Harbaugh going. I want to think about J.J. McCarthy. You know, we've been doing things here and there, but I'm revitalized and re-energized with spring practice. I want to do three shows per week from now until July. If we don't get it, so like the video. You want us to keep doing shows, we're going to let you guys decide today. 500 likes in today's video. We will commit to three shows per week from now, April, May, June, July. Next four months, four months and 11 days um, until August. August 1st, we're back with daily programming through the end of the Michigan football season. So like the video or we'll take it off until August. It's a four-month vacation for Jack and I. Mason Pryor coming in on Instagram. Ask me a question on the Instagram story. It's at Michigan Football Report. He says, have Sharon Moore's coaching picks met or exceeded your expectations? We are going to talk about that, answer that question, and tell you about the future of Michigan football all coming up on the Michigan Football Report. But I'll tell you what, tomorrow might be the greatest day of the year. Tomorrow and Friday, I don't know if there's a better back-to-back -back day other than maybe Michigan winning the national championship and then just celebrating it the day after. That's probably better for me, but... Uh, Jack, but today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. You got to get going with Prize Picks this March Madness. They got specials for new and returning users alike for March Madness. You got to head over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. That's the link. It's down in the comments. It's down in the description of today's video. Football season may be over, but the action on the hardwood is heating up. Whether it's March Madness or the fight for the NBA playoff seating, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. 
Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks. My favorite app. I've been using it back since September almost every single day. America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into some serious cash. Now, March Madness has kicked off. Here are my picks, right, for the opening round of the game. I got Caden Clark, right? They got a deal for her for Caden Clark, which is super exciting. It's a free pick for her matchup on Saturday, basically saying more than half a point. Now, that's pretty much a guarantee right there. More. Uh, how about Roddy Anderson? The third from Boise State, more than 5.5, five and a half rebounds plus assists. And then Terrence Shan Jr., that might hurt for some Michigan fans, should have been a Wolverine, couldn't get a mission, so he's at Illinois, more than 24 and a half points when they get kicked off on Thursday afternoon. Those are my prize picks. I win those. It's basically, I could get two right because we know that Caitlin Clark one's going to happen. I am in the money. Prize picks is simple. You pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and match. Uh, and you, you watch the winnings roll in if you get them right. Get started now. If you haven't already, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. First time deposit match of up to $100. You put in 50, boom, extra 50. 100, boom, an extra 100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Back to our question from Mason Pryor. Sure, more coaching staff. Now, we just talked about Greg Scruggs. So is he going to be part of it? I don't know yet, but here's where we stand outside of Moore himself. We've got the uh, 10 coaches that make up the 11-person uh, coaching staff. Kirk Campbell promoted really a nice come up from him, went from an analyst to a uh, quarterback's coach to an offensive coordinator in you know under a year and a half. So it's a pretty good come up for him. Wink Martindale keeping the Ravens system alive in Ann Arbor. Tony Offord, big get, Jack. Did you see this one? Spurned Ohio State, been with them for nine seasons. Uh, best running back combo in America. He decided to be part of Sharon Moore's first staff. Greg Scruggs, we'll see if he's with this team going forward. Ron Bellamy, wide receiver coaching. Everyone's getting inflated titles right now. as so a passing game coordinator. Steve Casulo, the coach I don't really know as much about as some of these other ones. Grant Newsome, uh, you know, could have had a Michigan, good Michigan playing career. Injured, been part of the staff. Tight ends coach now, offensive line coach. Scruggs, Brian Genmali from Tennessee was part of Harbaugh's staff, 2019-2020 time frame, went to Tennessee. Now he's back. Might be a big bump in recruiting. Lamar Morgan and then Michigan's special teams coordinator, J.B. Brown. I don't know what to think about this staff, right? It's it's more of a prove it. I'm disappointed, right? I'm disappointed that Mike Elson is not with the staff, okay? That's one defensive line coach. I am disappointed, very, very disappointed that Mike Hart is not part of the staff. And there's some wild rumors out there on Twitter about Hart. I hope they're not true. I mean, you know, I don't even want to speculate on him. I'm sure you guys have seen him. Um, but Mike Hart's a Michigan legend. He will, just like Jim Harbaugh, he'll always be a Michigan legend. I give him a ton of credit for coming back when Harbaugh was on the hot seat for the 2021 season. And his running game was as much a part of Michigan's success uh, as, you know, Mike McDonald's defense and other things. J.J. McCarthy's play over the, the next couple of seasons after that that had this 40-3 and three Michigan turnaround that led to a national title. I'll ask you this, Jack, really quick. Did it seem when we were talking to Mike Hart at the national championship game Saturday press conference, two videos before the game, I look back, and I actually was looking at my phone. I think it's on your phone when the cameras. Did our videos of him kind of, did he kind of seem off? Maybe did he seem disinterested to be there? Maybe a little bit. I mean, everyone seemed excited and chill and ready to be there, and he seemed maybe a little tense. You kind of almost sure. like, why are you asking me questions? He's like, yeah, I mean, like, I was, at the time, I was like, maybe this is just who he is. I'd never met him in person like that. But looking back, maybe he's, he had some dissatisfaction. There's some rumors of him and Jim Harbaugh not having the greatest relationship over time. Sure, more didn't invite him back. Whatever it becomes, I hope he lands on his feet. Has a hell of a job. And I hope he comes back to Michigan someday in the capacity. Maybe he's the head coach after Sharon Moore gives Michigan 15 years and decides to go be the head coach of the Chargers after Jim Harbaugh retires at 75 years old. So we will see. Great Sharon Moore's coaching staff, though. Instant reaction. I'm going to seven right now. I want to be proven. I want these guys to prove it before I just say, oh, wow, they came to Michigan. They're the best coaches. I'm going with the seven. Let me know down in the comments. Grade the staff one through ten. Don't be casual. Get in the comments. That's where your voice is heard here on the Michigan Football Report. Bill Graves, my main man, using hashtag Michigan. Appreciate that. Uh, Bill makes it easy to find on on-demand shows, live shows. He says, what are you looking for from the spring game this year, and how big of a drop-off due to schedule roster turnover in coaching staff going into 2024? Always hashtag Bosa. Let's look at the schedule, okay? 2024 Michigan football schedule, when they brought it out, looked incredibly daunting. In the month of August, so by the time September ends, you've got five home games. 
which is awesome. But I think, what is it, next year or the year after, Michigan is six home games, six away games. I wish it would be a little more balanced. Um, that Texas game looms large. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan pulled off an upset based on the defense um, and beat Texas that day. And all of a sudden, they go there, boom. They have USC at home. We don't know what we're getting from USC. You can just get a season where you've got one of the best defenses returning in the country, unknowns on offense, but you got the best tight end in the country. you got one of the best five or six running backs in the country. You've got a proven offensive line staff and Sherman Moore, uh, Grant Newsom, et cetera. Michigan wins that Texas game. They go in, USC, what are we going to give them? Welcome to the Big Ten. You could see Michigan win their first five home games sitting there as a top three or four team in the country. If you beat Texas, who will be a top three team in the preseason polls, and then you beat USC, who will probably be in the you know 20s if, if they're even ranked. Washington, I think Michigan's going to win that one. Early preseason projections have them as a 14-plus point favorite on the road at Washington with Jed Fish as their new coach. you got to buy Houston, halfway through the season, this could be a 6-0 team going on the road to Illinois. I expect that to be a win. Michigan State, I expect that to be a win. If you go into November, Jack, you are, what, 8-0 at this point. If everything plays through, if you get that win on Texas, keep in mind going to USC. It's iffy. It's iffy. I don't know if they're going to beat Oregon. We'll see. It's at home, so anything can happen. You roll into November at Indiana. I expect that to be a win. We'll see how it goes. Northwestern, I'm not sure what they're going to bring back. Northwestern's there. At Ohio State, I think Michigan should be saying, we can go into that Ohio State with a win. We're in the Big Ten, Big Ten Championship, et cetera. They're going to win it, of course. We're putting out good vibes. But if they've got one loss or two losses, keep even if they lose that game on the road close, which should be a top three or four, maybe even top two preseason Ohio State team, even if you go 9-3 and three with that schedule. And it's not as daunting had that schedule played this year, right? Imagine if Michael Penix Jr. is back. Imagine if Caleb Williams is back. Uh that would be a much tougher game. Imagine if the, the Oregon quarterback was back. So all those teams, a lot of those teams, including Ohio State, breaking in new QBs just like Michigan. So I think Michigan's got to be shooting for going to the Ohio State game with two losses or less. Right? Maybe they'll be undefeated, et cetera. We'll see when we get our predictions later on this summer. Uh, I think a, a three-loss Michigan team, even if they were to lose to Ohio State, which they won't, can make it to college football playoff. Um, what I'm looking for in the spring game, though, my focus is the quarterback battle. It's the number one thing that Michigan needs to focus on. Do they have a quarterback on this roster, whether it's Jaden Davis, the true freshman, whether it's J Jack Tuttle come back for his seventh year, Alex Orgy, Jaden Denegal, Jack Warren, what does that look like throughout spring as we get more practice intel, who's taking the reps, the ones with the twos, and then into the spring game. Next up, the offensive line depth, right? You got a transfer coming over from Northwestern. He should be right there as a starter. Um, you've got a lot of guys who have played, Miles Hinton, Giovanni El Hadi, and others, so I think you've got enough to put it four or five guys there that have significant playing experience in the Big Ten, breaking into a couple other ones, not as deep as years past, but hopefully the offensive line, Shrum Moore still there, could be uh, you know, a unexpected strength of the team. How about the running game? BC, you know, you go, you go it's like 2022, 20, you know, 2,000 years BC, all this different stuff. This is BC the opposite direction, post-BC, post-Blake Quorum. Can this team score? What's that? Dacey, after Quorum. After Quorum, there you go, I like that one. BC, AC, I like that. Um, you can even call me before Christ. I mean, uh, Jesus Christ, Blake Corn. To Michigan fans, Blake Corn might be Jesus Christ after scoring that touchdown against Alabama. Two touchdowns in the fourth quarter against Washington. Um, but can Diamond Edwards get done as the, the main back? Or do they roll up Kalel Mullings, Benjamin Hall, um, Cole Cabana, or others? We will see what this running game looks like post Blake Corm. The key to Michigan winning all these games, 40 and 3 in a lot of ways, has been Blake Quorum has been virtually unstoppable once Michigan gets inside the five-yard line. Touchdown, 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 touchdown. We saw what happened when they're in the five against TCU. What does that look like post-BC or AC? And then, Wink Martin Duel. Martin Dale. You've got a stacked defense, right? you got two linebackers that, that you really like. And Ernest Hausman, the transfer from Maryland as well, starting lineman there. you got great depth. Maybe the best defensive line or one of the top two or three D-lines in the country. Secondary, returning Three starters. Keon Saab, you know, lost hurts, but you got Mercari Page. You got Rod, Rod Moore. You got Will Johnson. So we'll see how that secondary shakes out. But if this defense is the same defense, is Wink Martindale going to run it the same way that his, his protégés, Jesse Minter and Mike McDowell did? And are they going to be uh, the difference maker and, you know, potentially be Michigan to a big upset win over Texas the second Saturday? of this football season. Guys, I haven't done shows in a while because I've just been basking, right? I just tell you what, I've been basking. Don't forget, when all the haters are out there on social media, oh, Michigan, Connor Stallions, Harbaugh left, your coaching staff left, your players, blah, blah, blah. Just tell them, Natty, 
won the national title. It's not going to wear off. I'm good for a decade. I'm good for a decade. I'll still have my takes, my opinions, but that win was so satisfied. If you're still celebrating, if you're still watching video highlights every single day like I am of the runs, of the plays, of the interceptions, of the tackles, of the celebrating, comment chaps, it champs down in the uh, comments of today's video if you are still celebrating like Jack and I have been. Zach T. Meyer says, what, which QB give us the best shot at contending again? Really good question. And it took me a while to think about it because, you know, you're replacing what I think is the best quarterback in Michigan football history and in the history of the Big Ten, the winningest quarterback by percentage of any quarterback, 27 and 1. No quarterback has ever had a better college career winning wise than J.J. McCarthy over 20 starts. And you got guys, Jack Tuttle. I didn't even put Davis Warren in this graphic. Alex Orgy, Jaden Davis, Al, you know, uh, Jaden Denegal, right? You haven't heard a ton about from him over the years. This battle is going to be intriguing. And I'm not convinced that whoever starts the first game is going to be the guy who starts the last game. The fan favorite right now is Alex Orgy. We all forget Jaden Davis is coming in as a highly ranked recruit. But keep an eye out for Jack Tuttle. So let me know what you guys think here before I give my opinion. Who will be the opening game starter? I put the three that I think are most likely. If you want to say Jaden Davis, eh, I'll tell you why I put Davis on there in a second. Here's a Jack Tuttle, seventh-year player, was a starter for Indiana for a few games three or four years ago. JT in the comments. Alex Orgy, give me an A-O. We want to say Orgy in the end zone just like RG3 all season long. Or is it the true freshman? Jaden Davis will come in and start the first game as a true freshman. I don't think it's happened since Tate Forcey in 2009, unless I'm missing somebody. Uh, so we know JT, A-O, or JD. I'll tell you what. I think it's going to be like this. I think it's possible Michigan starts as many as three quarterbacks this season. But I feel better about the quarterback position in a lot of ways than I did going into 2021. I mean, J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Davis. I know Davis didn't end up being ranked as high as McCarthy, but you kind of say, okay, cool. Uh, very, you know, quarterback of the future, true freshman. But did we really think Cade McNamara was going to turn into a Big Ten championship quarterback? I don't think anybody really did going into 2021. You didn't know who your running backs were going to be in 2021, right? Blake Corn broke out. Hassan Haskins, you thought he was going to be a running back. So this offense looks like it's, you know, it's losing 10 starters. What's it going to look like? But I don't think it's any worse than what Michigan was had coming in in 2021, at least his perception and proven ability. So my quick prediction is, no inside info on this, so I just want to pretend to that. Jack Tuttle gets the start. First game. I think Alex Orgy is going to play, and then he's probably going to start the second or third game, right? Maybe if Tuttle plays well, he could start versus Texas, see what happens there. Now, if Tuttle beats Texas, then all bets are off. Maybe they split carries or split uh, snaps. Orgy gets a few starts, but... I'm just going to put a crazy bet out there that by the eighth or ninth game, Jaden Davis has proven himself to be the quarterback of the future. Michigan might be you know, eight and one at the time and say, hey, let's roll with Davis, go down the stretch of the field, get into the college football playoff, and roll into 2025 with uh, our quarterback situation settled out. So I say Tuttle starts game one, Davis starts game uh, 12, or, and maybe the end of the, the season, and Orgy gets a ton of playing time in between there with every opportunity to prove that he is the guy, and that throws my entire prediction way out the window. Reminder. 500 likes is required on today's video or we are taking the next four months and 11 days off. So hit that like button because, uh, you know, if you watch the show, I assume that you want more Michigan football news, insider information that we always give you throughout spring practice into the summer and uh, leading up to fall practice in early August. Jack, we got the contributors, the producers we're calling them. Uh, how many people were there? Do you remember? Too many. Too many. Jack says well, too actually, many. there's no such thing as too many. No, that many. was the wrong phrasing. A lot, which so is many. incredible. So many, which so is many. incredible. Anyone who contributed a ten dollars super chat during like our twenty or so live shows we did over the last year, starting last April, I think it was, was after the Jaden Davis thing. So maybe the last eleven months, eleven and a half months. Uh, our producer, they will be on the end screen of this show for this year. Not maybe not every show, but at least like three out of every four shows we have the end screen. So check them out. Show them love. Show them some love in the comments. And if you are one of our producers, uh, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of our hearts. It made everything possible last year. Hope we continue giving you guys live shows this year. It's the Michigan Football Report. Check out the end screen. Like the video. Go Blue.